There's so much to learn about films, and the best way to learn is to watch, take notes, and review films. My name is Jake, and this is our first monthly film review. Thank you. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Orson Welles. I'm speaking for the Mercury Theatre, and what follows is supposed to advertise our first motion picture. Citizen Kane is the title. And we this month's film review will be on Citizen Kane. It is considered one of the best films of all time. I don't know much about it other than... Rosebud. Or this scene. Paper, press and publishing properties of any kind whatsoever. And agrees to abandon all claims. Which there means to... we're bust, all right. Well, out of cash. All right, Mr. Bernstein, I've read it, Mr. Thatcher. Now, I love this scene for many reasons. The biggest thing for me that I love about it is the play on size. If you're small, you seem to be powerless. If you're large, you seem to be powerful. But, but you don't need to be small in size physically to appear small. You can be far away, yet the same powerless effect can still be felt. If you come up closer, you'll look more powerful. That's only one of the many ways that Citizen Kane uses size to help tell its story. Here's another example. Now, I haven't seen the film, so I don't know what other techniques that it has. So I'm very keen to watch this and to watch it with all you guys. So if you can find a copy, I know JB Hi-Fi has it for $6 at the moment on DVD but also the local library should have it, so check them out. From music, dialogue, shot duration, the use of lighting, the use of shadows, Citizen Kane I know will offer so many techniques to help tell its story. So I invite you over the next two weeks to find a copy of Citizen Kane, sit down, give it a watch, note down the three significant things that you felt just caught your attention that was really great that you wanted to either learn more about or share with everyone else and in our next focus night bring it along and basically let's just pull it apart see what we can use and hopefully in our future projects we can adapt some of these techniques and tell better stories from it How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Orson Welles. I'm speaking for the Mercury Theatre, and what follows is supposed to advertise our first motion picture. Citizen Kane is the title, and we hope it can correctly be called a coming attraction. It's certainly coming, coming to this theatre, and I think our Mercury actors make it an attraction. I'd like you to meet them. Speaking of attractions, well, the chorus girls are certainly an attraction. But frankly, ladies and gentlemen, we're just showing you the chorus girls for purposes of ballyhoo. It's a pretty nice ballyhoo. But here are some of our real Mercury people. This is the first time you've seen most of them on the screen. Hey, uh, give Joe a little light. Thanks. Now smile for the folks, Joe. Smile. Joseph Cotton, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Joseph Cotton. I think you're going to see a lot of him. Here's Ruth Warwick, whom I know you love. Ruth. Look at the camera, Ruth. We caught Ruth with her hair up. And here's somebody you've all heard on the radio, so I don't have to tell you he's wonderful. Ray Collins. Dorothy Comingore is a name I'm going to repeat. Dorothy Comingore. I won't have to repeat it much longer. You'll be repeating it. And here's George Kouluris, who's a grand actor. I'll say that name again. George Kouluris. Watch it. Here comes Everett Sloan. Look out, Everett. Oops. Everett Sloan, ladies and gentlemen. He isn't necessarily a comedian. And here's one of the best in the world. Agnes Moorhead. I've said a lot of nice things, but Erskine Sanford deserves some more. Erskine. Erskine Sanford. So does Paul. Paul. Paul Stewart, everybody. Citizen Kane is a modern American story about a man called Kane. Charles Foster Kane. I don't know how to tell you about him. There's so many things to say. I'll turn you over instead to the characters in the picture. 
As you'll see, they feel very strongly on the subject. Charles Foster Kane is... Sure, he started the war. But do you think if it hadn't been for Mr. Kane, the United States would have the Panama Canal? Charles Foster Kane is nothing more or less than a communist. Kane, governor. Listen, when the voters of this state and Mrs. Kane learn what I found out about Mr. Kane and a certain little blondie named Susan Alexander, he couldn't be elected dog catcher. I'm going to skin Mr. Charles Foster Kane alive. I'm going to marry him next week at the White House. Emily, I hear you've been stepping out with Charlie Kane. I... Of course I love him. I gave him $60 million. Well, of course I love him. He's the richest man in America. But all the girls say about him at first. But you know, I can't help but admire him. He's crazy. He's wonderful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what you'll think about Mr. Kane. I can't imagine. You see, I play the part myself. Well, Kane is a hero. And a scoundrel, a no account, and a swell guy, a great lover, a great American citizen, and a dirty dog. It depends on who's talking about him. What's the real truth about Charles Foster Kane? I wish you'd come to this theater when Citizen Kane plays here and decide for yourself. <laughs>